so I think it's a great uh, delight to see so many new and familiar faces here this evening. Um, obviously here to celebrate Harriet's fantastic new book, Among the Hoods. It is a brilliant read. Harriet has been a, an old friend of the Centre for Policy Studies for the last, if she could be old, <laughs> <laughs> for the last uh, 12 years, I believe. 12 years. 12 years. Yeah. Uh, uh, starting with a brilliant paper on immigration, when that was a subject which we weren't allowed to talk about. <laughs> then talking about the failures of the NHS, which was then a subject which we weren't allowed to talk about. <laughs> uh, then talking about the absolute scandalous uh, 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 state of care homes, which again we weren't allowed to talk about. And um, finally, this fantastic pamphlet, Wasted, talking about the complete uh, uh, betrayal of black and white working class children in our education system. Harriet has an amazing flair, staggering honesty, and incredible bravery in all that she's done. Uh, she's gone into areas where no one else has dared to go, and shone a spotlight which has illuminated very important problems in our society, and yet she's been able to do that with incredible charm and brilliance. Um, so, you now have absolutely no excuse to be in this office without buying a book. I'm delighted to say uh, we believe in the market, so it's not £15, which you'll pay at a good bookshop, but £12. So do please buy it. Also, of course, you can buy Wasted, again discounted. <laughs> they are £5 for those of you lucky enough to be here this evening. Um, Harry. Well, first of all, I'd like to thank the Centre for Policy Studies, not just for this launch party, which was very generous and kind of them, but for all the years of allowing me to more or less do exactly what I wanted, which was to disappear for about 10 or 11 months, um, and then suddenly to surface with something that was usually far too long, and say, here it is, I want it out now. And Tim turned out to be such a support, always my best editor, always got me a lot of publicity and also what what I wanted which was to get my ideas across to the people who matter um, and that's exactly what any writer wants but very rarely fine so thank you very much Tim uh, I, was, uh, I was I was researching this report wasted which meant going around all around the country um, interviewing young men and I was very fortunate to meet one man in his 30s, um, Keith Reed, whose father is here tonight, Clovis, who uh, said, right, well, he said to me, I met him in a community centre where he was working, and he said, you are going to be, get in trouble going around Brixton on your own accosting teenage boys. I thought <laughs> <laughs> they would be the ones in danger. <laughs> you had better, you had better, uh, I'd better come with you. And so um, we went around interviewing various young men, and then he remembered this gang that hangs around outside his local chicken takeaway. So we went there, and I remember standing on the other side of the road, looking at this group of boys, and frankly, I was frightened. They looked capable of anything. They were in hoodies, uh, they were shouting, they were carrying on, and as a sort of white middle-class woman, what I wanted to do was walk by on the other side of the road, and just hope I wasn't noticed. Um, and he said, come on, he said, you've got to talk to them little boys, and grabbed me and went across the road. And he was right. I mean, that was the best thing that happened. Um, <laughs> and uh, I, what I found very quickly, um, a, a number of things that, that totally, and I thought I knew quite a lot after all I had done the research, um, but there was, a number of things that just completely turned me around. Um, and I mean, I, I have a son the same age, and I found that, like my son, these boys were bright, and they were ambitious, and they were very energetic and very hardworking. Unfortunately, not at the things that we want them to be. And the other thing I discovered very quickly, getting to know them, was that how the forces that were stopping them realizing their potential I mean, Tuggy Tug, the leader of the gang, who's unfortunately in prison at the moment, he said what he wanted to do, what his ambition in life was. 
and that was to own a big house in the suburbs and play golf all day. <laughs> you know, this is not an, an extraordinary ambition. This should be the ambition of every young man in this country. Oh, not no. golf. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, this was as impossible for him as, you know, for the rest of us to go to the moon. And I quickly discovered, you know, first of all, that they were barely able to read and write. They dropped out of school at 14. Um, they ha ha didn't have enough to eat. That, you know, in this modern welfare state where we are spending so much money, they failed. No one had provided them with anywhere to live, with enough to eat, with education, uh, with an, or with an occupation. And most importantly, with no hope of the future. And at first, I thought I was going to change them, and I was sort of taking them off to um, <clears throat> museums, the um, Tate Modern, um, with uh, absolutely very little success. <laughs> uh, but then, actually what happens is they changed me far more than, than I changed them. And from being right-wing uh, supporter of the Centre for Policy Studies, writer for the Daily Mail, uh, I have to say I've now become an anarchist. <laughs> this book is my attempt to make anarchists of everybody <laughs> and sort of asking why is this happening, why are we failing to do all of these things and what can we do to stop wasting so many young men's lives and making misfits and criminals out of potentially perfectly decent, hard-working young people. Thank you. Very, very kindly uh, agreed to say a few words. He's the uh, Minister of Prisons and Minister of uh, Justice. Justice as well. He's it from the other end. Uh, and I'm lucky enough to work for, uh, with Ken Clark. And Harry, what you've done over the last two years, uh, not only not walking by on the other side and really engaging with these, with these toughest issues, I think is, is congruent with what we're trying to do, which is to break the cycle of crime, and it's all about delivering much earlier intervention and the whole social justice framework. These kids are going off the rails in the age of naught because of the circumstances into which they are being born. Uh, frequently with, with mums who are in very difficult circumstances, surrounded by addiction, with no, with no dad, no support, and we then wonder why uh, these, these kind of kids then find themselves in the state that you found them in, um, in, a, in a gang aged 14, 15, 16. Uh, completely disengaged from, from society and finding no way uh, through uh, through the through all the demands of uh, uh, the popular press, such as the Daily Mail, as to how we should uh, how we should uh, sentence uh, uh, youngsters who get into get into trouble uh, trouble in this way. And we have to find a more intelligent way uh, of, of 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 dealing with people. And that's and it, I'm lucky enough to sit on the Social Justice uh, Cabinet Committee as part of my responsibilities which means we are starting uh, age naught in terms of what we're addressing. So that's where uh, Louise Casey's Trouble Families uh, programme is, is aimed at. It's actually aimed at giving uh, mothers and families the support right from, uh, right from the beginning. And all of our policies are then trying to, uh, to address, uh, there's a target audience, it is, it is the, the uh, boys and young men that you were uh, uh, that you've taken the trouble to get to know and to understand um, so that we can actually get in there and break the cycle of crime that they are in. And, and girls that's too, I presume, because there are yeah, girl yeah, gangs yeah, too. Yeah, you know, yeah. you're talking about boy yeah, gangs. So and yeah, yeah. Uh, of course, yeah. um, and, and there are some, and also with girls, there are some shocking victim stories uh, about girls who are associated, associated, associated with gangs. So this is not, this is not uh, sort of gender specific, other than expected, except. Uh, and Harriet's work, uh, as, as, I under, as I understand it was, uh, but we've we've got to make much better sense of our whole approach to this in order to break the cycle. And we need people, uh, Harriet, like you, who are going to shine a spotlight on the issues that we are addressing. That's why I'm you know, delighted to be here to say a few words in uh, support of your, your work and your uh, and your book. And um, just to my absolutely agree as a. So obviously it's a snip of the snip of the price, and I hope, it, and I hope it, will, it will continue to in, it will it will continue to inform inform our policy, and I, you know, really hope that uh, you know 
having been any writer for the Daily Mail, um, you will be able to, uh, to take the message to all quarters, and you can conquer that particular quarter that you know, life is just a bit more complicated than simply a retributive uh, justice system. Um, we've got to have, we, we have to have deterrence in the criminal justice system, but in the end we also need rehabilitation and restoration as well. And if we can uh, use all the work that you, you've done to illustrate the problems to help better inform our policy, uh, so much, so much the better. So thank you very much for all the time you've put into researching this and producing it. It was a real contribution to public policy. Thank you. Yay.